Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian. If you're a gaming YouTuber, you never have to worry about running out of games to play. Even if you're a small fry niche of a niche cockroach like me, chances are that if you for some reason left your contact email address on your about page, you'll have a steady stream of developers and publishers jamming their proverbial feet in your inbox door to try to get you to pay attention to whatever they're doing. And don't get me wrong, I don't bemoan that aspect of whatever it is I'm doing here. On the contrary, I think it's kind of flattering that these people are under the misguided assumption that having me talk about their game will somehow provide them with any decent, meaningful exposure, which, I just want to say up front, is absolutely not the case. You're not getting anything out of putting your game in front of me. In fact, you're probably better off not to. I mean, have you seen the sort of shit I dish out at games that I actually like? Yeah, having your game featured on my channel isn't exactly the one-way ticket to game stardom you may think it is. But to be honest, that much should be obvious from a cursory glance at my content, and I'm happy to report that that's clearly not something most developers seem to bother doing. No, on quite the contrary, most developers just seem to do a blanket search for adventure game YouTubers and just shotgun blast out the same copied and pasted press release vomit to every single result they get without so much as the scrutinous skim of their content. Sometimes they don't even bother checking whether some of the channels they're blasting at are even remotely in their wheelhouse. I've gotten a fair few of those, my favorite being this one. I have observed that you have covered indie games such as Hades, Crypt of the Necrodancer, Just Shapes and Beats, Wander Song, The Bit Trip series, and Thomas Was Alone. Well, fuck me. Either I had an astonishingly prolific period during a massive drunken blackout, or this person's observational skills are just flat out fucking broken. Seriously, I dare you to watch every single video on my channel and comb through every single social media post I've ever made since the beginning of time, and I swear you will not find a single mention of any of those games. But, to be fair, most of the unsolicited emails I get tend to be from scrappy young up-and-coming indie developers who just want someone, anyone, to take a look at their game, and to get just a sliver of exposure in this vast, impenetrably overpopulated sea of new games that are all vying for attention. And I can certainly understand that, and I can even respect it. Granted, because I am an absolute bag of rancid testicular funkus on legs, I tend to ignore these emails. But, that's all about to change right now. Welcome to a new series on this channel I like to call To The Wolves. Now, yes, stalwart followers of this channel may recognize this as something I have attempted in the past during some of my more ill-advised live streaming sessions, so to call this a new series is actually kind of a stretch, but bear with me. This is the new and refurbished version of that concept, so let's all pretend this is brand new and exciting, okay? Basically, what this entails is... I take some of these games that have been brought to my attention through unsolicited scattershot emailing and actually give them the exposure they so desperately crave, but I'm gonna do it on my own, snarky, playfully sadistic terms. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna give each of these games exactly 15 minutes of my time, no more, no less, and I'm gonna see if these games can manage to grab my attention and convince me that they are worth my time in those 15 minutes. So it's a case of unfiltered, no-holds-barred first impressions, and it might get a little rough, but hey, they asked for it, I'm giving it to them. Now to make things a little more interesting, and also to give the whole thing a slightly less tenuous air of legitimacy, I've enlisted a few of my friends from the Adventure Game Hotspot Network to do the same. We're each going to be playing the same games, with the same rules, 15 minutes and we're done, and we're going to give our honest opinions about whether or not these games are worth keeping an eye out for. Hence the name of the series, To The Wolves, as in, I'm literally throwing these games to the wolves to see if they can come out the other side unscathed. Sounds like fun? Well, it sure did when I thought of it, so let's see how much fun we're in for, if any. For this inaugural episode, again, let's just pretend we've never done this before, we're going to be playing four new upcoming games, and we have four wolves from the AGH network, in addition to myself, to throw them at. The wolves in question are, in addition to myself, my good friends One Short Eye, Adventure Game Geek, and Anna from the Classic Gamers Guild podcast. And the games we're going to be playing are Bent Oak Island, We Stay Behind, Sons of Saturn, and A Lively Haunt. So let's dive in, shall we? Bent Oak Island is the first game on the chopping block. This is a one-person dev sort of affair. It's basically a passion project by this one dude who really wanted to make an adventure game. He did do a Kickstarter for the game, but he went about it in a really smart way, I think. He basically made the entire game first, in his spare time, as in the complete game, playable from start to finish. 
And then he went on Kickstarter and said, look, the game is done and I will be releasing it no matter what, but I did run up some debt while making it, so if you can help me cover those expenses, that'd be great. And if we hit a couple of stretch goals, I could use that additional dodge to make the game look even better. And he only asked for a thousand bucks, which seems pretty fair to me. And he ended up with a little under double that, so good for him. But we're not here to talk about how clever he was. We're here to take a look at the demo of his game. So let's see how our wolves get on with it. All right, Bent Oak Island. I do not see any pirates. Chapter one arrival. Is there supposed to be music at this point? In the early 1990s, our heroes arrive at their destination after a long day's travel. Okay, so we're playing these two characters, Archer and Sam. I think we just control Archer though. Now I get to hang out with my little bro all day, every day. Okay, so brother, sister, gotcha. You're older than me by like two minutes. Relax with that. And they're twins, gotcha. Right off the bat, pixel art style, I'm, I'm good, that's fine. Um, a little nonplussed about the standard Unity font and the misaligned portrait uh, graphics, like you can see a little thin pixel line under her massive pixel face. Uh, it's, it's a shame you can't turn the music down or turn the music off uh, right now. Um, and uh, on, honestly, like this, this track actually plays throughout the whole demo, so it gets it gets very very repetitive actually. Fine. Do we walk around or no? This is static. We're in uh, Dark Side Detective Land, so let's check out the payphone. I'm clicking the payphone. Oh, right click is use. Talk to. Look at. Oh. So let's take a look at things. Fairy. If I click on it, that doesn't do anything. I guess that's use. I can't do anything with that right now. Talk to the fairy. It doesn't want to talk to me. Okay. Nothing wants to talk to you. Sounds like my childhood too. Can I use the yellow pages? Yellow pages and white ones too. Looks like someone circled all the Sarah Connors. Oh, ha ha. Terminator reference. Okay. Yellow pages and white ones too. <laughs> Looks like someone circled all the Sarah Connors. All right. We're hitting it on the references here. I should check this one for some change. Oh, yeah, is there anything in it? Ah, I found a quarter. I'll just put that in my pocket. Otherwise known as my inventory. Nice MS paint job. Cash money. Okay, we got a quarter. All right, let's head on into the island. I think you have to use the exit. There we go. <laughs> nice, nice smooth transition there. And they have, wait. So they have a little fade animation that's kind of cool going back that way, but not this way. Well, I guess I'll head towards the land. Let's go somewhere. Hey, fisherman buddy, what's up? No, you're a captain. Hello, smoky pipey man with bucket of fish. Listen, my beak is dry. Bring me something to dip in and you can have my fish. Yes, he's got a British accent. Anyways, weird things have uh, weird things been happening on the island. Ghosts, mayhap, or maybe ghouls. Okay. Could there have possibly been ghosts and goblins? What about super? Go stop it! Stop you! Stop it! All right, let's go to town. All right, here we are in town already. My goodness, that was a fast travel. Okay. Got a little Hot Wheels parking lot over here. Uh, yeah, keep heading inland. This town is kind of creepy without any people around. I keep waiting for something bad to happen. Like a zombie jumps out at us from the shadows or something? I was thinking more like we get mugged by a guy in a ski mask. But sure, zombies. If we had rented a VHS tape or video game, we could return it here. Yeah, 24 hours a day, any day. Yep, the door seems to be jammed right now, though. I prefer my door to be ajar. <laughs> Uh, hmm. So I, I'm thinking we should probably go find Uncle, and maybe he can get the plot moving. Ah, what's this a bar? Uh, I guess maybe we can get uh, we can get the British captain uh, drink in here because it says they have beer, which most bars do, I guess. The Squirrel Cage Bar. This looks like a place you could get tetanus from someone stabbing you with a rusty knife. Rust is my favorite trait of Earth-based browns. We should definitely check it out. We aren't old enough to drink. Okay, so that answers one question I had. It's a dead cat, not dead cat scenario. We are only not old enough to drink if someone asks us if we are old enough to drink. That was an awkward 
bit of dialogue. Okay. Actually, screw the uncle. Let's go have a beer. Looks like a place you could get tetanus. I'm into it. We're not old enough to drink. Who cares? Who cares? There's no one here. Go into the bar. Uh, sexy lady. Generic sexy lady poster. A poster of one of those bikini ladies from TV. Va va voom. Who says va va voom? Nope. Okay. Barkeep, two tall cold ones, please. I think we're a bit young. Okay, twelve. How old are you? Fourteen. No way. The cat is dead. The cat is dead. What? All right. Well, how about an ice cold Boku? I won't serve you a foreign beer either. What? No Boku? The, the, the delightful fruit beverage. Don't know. Come on, I demand a Boku or an equivalent adult marketed juice box. Can't help you. The summer's gonna bite. Okay. Okay, let's talk to Chad. Hey there, little lady and um guy. Hi. Hey, me and my broski just rolled into town. We're checking the sites. What's the haps? My oh god. Oh, that's that's awful. Ted, you seem like a cool guy. Where can a girl like me find some excitement around here? You're underage. Settle the fuck down. Wait, hold on. I've been bartending for 16 years. I wanted to be a lumberjack, leaping from tree to tree as they float down the mighty rivers of British Columbia. Oh no, the jet, the lark. Okay, so we, we've got some Monty Python fans, I, I think is what this is. That's a nice collection of dead birds you got there. Thank you, do you collect? Oh, I'm only an amateur dead bird person. Don't have the time to go pro. Well, let me know if you're ever looking to trade. I'm always open to deals. And that's a time. There's your 15 minutes. Right. Okay. Oh, and I guess we're uh, almost out of time, actually. Um, oh, yeah. This this is the motel, um, which is, which is uh, where we're supposed to be staying. And so, yeah, like this is actually these are actually all the screens that you can visit. Um, I don't think you could even go into the in, into the motel, but uh, but yeah. So there you go. Um, yeah. All of a sudden, night fell upon the city. Does does uh, day fall upon? Oh wait! Oh, go to the front of the motel. This this is kind of fucked up. So we're on this screen right here. We go left. Now we're on this screen, but we've like flipped uh, 180 degrees. So now going to the left again means we go back to the bar. That's a head scratcher and a half. Hi, Gladys. How you doing? Can I get your number? Look at your sweet and all, but you're far too young for me. Uh, I'm an exchange student or something. Uh, uh, give me a pack of smokes and it's yours. Just get what? So the game encourages us to buy smokes for someone much older than us. Okay. Well, we can solve a puzzle, can't we? Uh, motel entrance. Let's go in. So. Cigarette machine. All right, so the woman outside wanted uh Okay, they made a cool joke. Cigarette machine, let's put a quarter in that. Oh, it only needed a quarter more. Now I have some cigarettes. Okay, okay, okay. a quarter more? Uh, apparently I skipped over some uh, exposition about the uh, cigarette machine. But uh, let's uh, go out and give her her MS Paint smokes. All right, we want to do anything with that. Okay, and that is my timer. So that is our time with Bent Oak Island. Oh, we're down to the last. Actually, we are past the 15 minute mark. All right. I was like, hey, right, wait a minute. This is counting up. This is not counting down. And uh, it is indeed counting up, which means that the 15 minutes of fame of this game are over! Right, so let's get a verdict in, shall we? Now, to put these games in some sort of interrelatable context, I came up with a scale system of 0 to 5 and asked each of the wolves to rank the games based on this scale. And the scale goes a 0. I'd rather set my genitals on fire than ever see this game again, and if I ever meet the dev, I'll punch them in the face. 
0.5 means I'm actually furious that I had to spend 15 minutes of my life playing this game and I actively resent it for wasting my time. A 1 means I'm not angry per se, but this game was a waste of my time on practically every front. 1.5, I may have experienced a slight glimmer of interest, but even so, there was really nothing here worth my time. A 2, not my thing, but maybe someone else might like it. 2.5, yeah, but nah. A 3, interesting, but didn't exactly light my shit on fire. 3.5, I was interested, but underwhelmed, maybe with a bit more spit and polish I could be convinced to play this again. A 4, I'm into it, I'm digging it, I feel my time was well spent. 4.5, I'm very, very interested, I had a very good time, and I am definitely gonna come back to this. And a 5, holy fucking shit, where's this fucking thing been all my life? Now, I want to make clear, and this is very important, this is not an objective review score. This is an entirely subjective, individual score, with the metric being, was this worth my time? And this is a very important distinction, because we could be playing the most objectively gorgeous game of all time, but it is entirely possible that it just didn't light our shit on fire for whatever reason. And that's what these scores reflect, okay? So I'm saying this because I don't want to see anyone in the comments go, oh, how could you rank this game like that when it clearly has this and this and this going for it? Yeah, that's all well and good, thanks. But you have to keep in mind, we're not ranking these games based on what we think others might think about them. These are, and I say this again emphatically and with the greatest of emphasis, entirely subjective scores. Did we feel that this game wasted our time? Or is this something we would be keen on coming back to? And hey, if you've played these games yourself, just feel free to leave your own ranking in the comments based on this, if I do say so myself, scientifically bulletproof scale. Now, full disclosure, I sort of kind of came up with all this ranking shit as I was playing the games myself. It wasn't like I meticulously planned this circus rodeo. I'm not that organized. And if I had the foresight to come up with this before we all started playing, I would have asked the wolves to give their score and their final thoughts on camera, but I didn't. Luckily, One Short Eye and Adventure Game Geek did decide to record a short summary of sorts at the end of their playthroughs, and I'll play those for you when we do the rankings at the end of each little gameplay montage here, but Anna didn't, and that's not her fault, that's just because I came up with this ranking shit way after everyone had already finished playing their games. She did, however, kindly supply me with some final thoughts in writing after the fact, so I'll read those aloud when we do her rankings. And also, to be honest, I was probably a little too lenient with my scores. Again, if I'd worked this shit out before we started playing, I probably would have put a little more thought into my closing words and rankings as well. But, yeah, you know, it's, it's a learning process. There's always next time. So, enough beating around the disclaimer bush. Let's slam this motherfucker up against the wall, give it a cigarette and a blindfold, and let's spray some fucking ranking bullets at it. Take it away, one short eye. All right, so my impressions of Bent Oak Island kind of cute kind of intriguing you know for a uh you know little indie game I, I i think it might have promised some of the dialogue was uh a bit chuckle inducing i i could you can sort of tell that it's an early version of the game there's a lot of polish that isn't there the whole like uh no walking animation kind of threw me. I know that that's, I think that that's an aesthetic in, in other games. I just not very familiar with it myself. And at times I found that a bit jarring. There are also just, you know, little things like the um, uh, punctuation being off as well as, yeah, really the, the punctuation and then the useless icon was a little weird. You know, it's not like it was literally unplayable, uh, but it was okay. It was okay. And it was, uh, it was sort of, uh, interesting to uh to to pick at for a few minutes and as you'll see from this handy wolfpack scoreboard i just whipped up in photoshop in five minutes that's a two out of five from one short eye next up to the firing range is adventure game geek uh pretty pretty good not 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 bad not bad you know i did i did enjoy my first my first playthrough um you know it, it's pretty standard standard pixel art adventure game stuff not not much more i can say about this one really um would, it, would i play the full game uh maybe i'm not really sure i, I think like they they, they they have to change the music though because it's just this one music track and it gets very repetitive um obviously there's no voice acting so i don't know if there have been any voice acting in the final game possibly not but anyway uh okay that's uh that's enough of that uh I don't really have much much more to say about this one and uh that's it okay agg out 
And that's a 2.5 from Adventure Game Geek. A little better, but our shit still has yet to catch fire. As for myself, here's what I had to say at the end of my playthrough. Okay, so my initial thoughts. The pixel art style is fine. It's a little jarring that all the um, fonts and the inventory icons and all the UI stuff, uh, the uh, everything is in high resolution while everything in the game is low resolution. I, I'm very worried about Sam's legs. I'm very, especially her feet. I, I think we are looking at some, th there's going to be a doctor's visit in her future. Uh, the writing is fine. I think the writing thinks it's funnier than it is. I mean, there's a lot of cheap references. You got, yeah, you got the Monty Python reference, and you got the, uh, it's just, it's just a little, it's a little cheap. And also, I mean, the animation is what it is, practically non-existent. But uh, I think that's part of the uh, so-called charm of this style. Uh, again, I'm not going to rag too much on that. Some people say that this, like, big, chunky pixel art style is lazy. I, I disagree with that. Uh, you only have to look at Dark Side Detective to, to, to see that uh, you can get something very, very amazing out of very, very few pixels. But the illusion is broken in this game, I feel, by the fact that the UI is... Well, first of all, it's lazy because it's just the standard Unity font and I, I, I assume standard Unity inventory window. The inventory icons are just messy MS Paint stuff in the wrong resolution. So the illusion is kind of lost on me. Uh, it's, uh, it's not very immersive, is it? So it's... Uh, if I'm going to give it a score, I wasn't actually going to give scores, but I'm going to give it a score anyway. If it's uh, if we're doing scores here, my initial reaction is like a, it's a, it's a three out of five. Like I can see there's potential and there's probably a plot in there somewhere. And if it just settles down a bit with the uh, so-called witty banter back and forth, um, I mean, I mean, this the setup isn't bad. I mean, we've seen uh, uh, games like uh, Oxenfree. Where you just arrive on an island and you're not really, you don't really know what you're supposed to be doing, and all of a sudden you find a radio and boom, ghosts appear. Uh, spoiler. Uh, so the same thing could happen here. It could also be a very, very boring game where you just help a fisherman catch some fish and rescue seagulls. I don't know. Um, that's the 15 minutes of fame I'm going to give this game, and um, that's it. So that's a three from me. And last up, locked and loaded, is CGG Anna. She says, and I quote, <clears throat> a little too primitive for me and those jokes. So with that, that's a 2.5 from Anna as well. So that's 11 Wolfie points for Bent Oak Island in total. Not the best score to get us started with, but hey, just to remind you, these are our opinions. They're not review scores. Your mileage may vary and probably will indeed. We do wish the best of luck to this dev. So anyway, fuck it. Onwards with the next game. The next game is We Stay Behind. This was sent to me by both the devs, Backwoods Entertainment, and their publishers, Heidelberg Application Systems, which is a lovely name for a games company, I think you'll agree. Now, to be fair, you could make the argument that this isn't totally unsolicited, given that I did play their previous game, Unforeseen Incidents, on my stream a couple of years back, and we did have the devs on as guests on the Backseat Designers podcast that I co-hosted before then, while that game was still in development, so one could arguably insinuate that I had left the door open somewhat for them, given my prior interest in the work, but that's not going to stop us from giving their new game, We Stay Behind, a run through the ringer. Now, at the time of making this video, the Kickstarter for this game is still fresh in memory. It finished in September of 2013, and spent... 2013? 2023, goddammit. It finished, in this, it finished in September of 2023 and sped past its goal of 25,000 euro, which is not an insignificant amount of scratch, I think you'll agree, to rake in just over 35,000 euro, which I also think you'll agree is a fairly impressive amount of scratch. I'm going to fix that for the subtitles because that's going to look weird, isn't it? 2013, holy shit. Ugh! Mmm! Anyway, judging from their last game, these guys seem to be all about the ominous, slow-burning mystery type things, and this one is shaping up to be no exception. Apparently the story is about this quiet mountain town that knows a comet is about to come and just fucking level the place to the ground, but for some reason, the inhabitants all decide to stick around anyway for... Pfft, mysterious reasons. And I say apparently, because as you're about to see, 
none of that is made clear at the start of the demo. So let's set those timers to 15 minutes once again and let the wolves loose and see how they cope with this game's first challenge, getting it to even run properly. I'm going to attempt to play uh, this demo for We Stay Behind, um, although I'm not sure if it's working correctly. Uh, I had to update my, uh, my graphics driver just to play this. It has to install. Ooh. Okay, so we're going to be installing some script here. Well, that gives me time to find my timer. Well, are you going to run the game or not? Please run the game. Please. Oh, it's done. Here we go. Oh, 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 finally, finally, here we go. Okay. Ah, this is, this is, this is going to be a, a very, very peaceful game, right? N nothing, nothing bad is, nothing bad is going to happen here. Very pretty. Okay. Got like, like a misty, foresty kind of day thing going here. Very three dimensional. Well, Burnham Creek Health Resort looks pretty. And my computer doesn't seem to be chugging too badly with the awesome 3D graphics on display, so that's a plus. Oh, okay. I have control here. I am. Let's uh, let's have a look around. Uh, oh, okay. All right. So I'm guessing. Okay. Mouse sensitivity is a little high, but uh, here, let me turn that. Down. Okay, that's a little bit better. Uh, it's kind of bugging out on me, and I can't move. How do I move? Am I in control? Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, we got, uh, oh, we got WASD movement. Woo. I'm, 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 I'm press, pressing every button. WASD, arrow keys. Uh, the mouse seems to swivel the camera, although I can't really see what I'm doing because it's like bugging out on me. Sorry. Uh, let me see if I can fi fix the issue. But uh, if, if not, this is uh, this is a very short demo playthrough. There you go. All right, AGG here uh, again. Um, I think uh, I've uh, fixed the graphical issues that I was having uh, before. Um, so let's give this another go and see if I can actually figure out how to play it. Can I jump? No jumping. Mm. Can I, what? What was that? So you can we look at this. Wait, what's that? Oh, is it not, is it not in English? The Mr. Ned Zyke. This interface is a bit finicky. I can't really. Well, there's a there's a translation error there, or a missing translation. Famistan Zyke. Uh oh, am I playing in the wrong language? Yeah, let me go to settings. I'm in English. Okay. I am lurking in the forest. I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna eat your afro like a popsicle. No, actually, no, no, we have 15 minutes. Let's not get distracted here. Who's this? Oh, I think, I think, I think we saw them like as we were driving in. Hi, Maggie. Excuse me. Oh, hello there. A new face. <laughs> we don't get many visitors these days. I'm Laura, Laura Tanner. Is it Miss Pearson? <laughs> is it Miss Pearson? And she's like, oh, yes, it is. <laughs> yes. Call me Maggie. I should consume you with a vicious schwaz. That's a soup, isn't it? Soup's on. Tell Maggie about the... I'd like to know about the incident. Actually, I got here last night. I don't know. Something happened on the road. An accident. I'm assuming that's going to be part of an intro cutscene later. I got here last night, but there was an incident. Oh, there, there was an accident. Okay. I spent last night in the police station. Can I run? Ooh, I can run. Sorry, this is the speedrunner in me trying to think. That's no place to spend you first night in Laburnum Creek. Can I break this by running away? Is that possible? Come on, I'll get you some tea. You can tell me what happened. This way now. Okay, I'm following you. How far can I go? This way now? Whoa, okay, that's weird. I'm afraid I don't have coffee. I'm afraid I don't have coffee. It's okay, tea's all right. I expect young folks prefer coffee, but I'm old and I drink tea. Oh shit, what does that mean I'm old? No, righty Heidi. Me and my fantastic field of vision is gonna 
come inside your house and lag for a bit and get stuck on the door and not be able to come inside. Oh, oh, there's the door. Make yourself at home. The frame rate just absolutely murdered itself. Now, I don't have the latest and greatest computer, but I have a computer that can normally run things better than this. Um, uh, honey mushroom tea? No. I'll have some honey mushroom tea. Why not? Um, sure, I'll try your honey mushroom tea. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're always feeling adventurous. Ask for honey mushroom tea. I wouldn't drink it before opening, operating a crane or doing open heart surgery. <laughs> yeah, I'll have that. Now, don't be nervous. I don't make it too strong. We don't need you floating out the window. Gotta, okay, well, uh, is this some kind of like magic mushroom tea? The genus of the mushroom only grows in the bird. I don't care. What, what am I doing here? We don't need you floating out the window. What's in it? Am I, am I, am I gonna trip balls? No, I'll, I'll stick with the honey mushroom tea. Eh, I wasn't planning on doing open heart surgery. Honey mushroom tea it is. Coming right up. Take a seat, dear. Uh, okay, where do I sit? I want to sit here. Actually, I want to try to break your house. Can I go up? The, what happens if I go up the stairs here? The tea is done. Take a seat, my dear. No! <laughs> Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> I know everyone and everything here. So whatever you need, just ask. Back when the spa was open, there was really nothing else like it. People came from everywhere. Oops, I just changed my view. Oh, I see. I can zero in. The Beaumont's uh, Hotel. Oh, fuck. Oh, tons of people I couldn't give less of a shit about. All right. Shut up, Aggie. Let the girl settle in. <laughs> my head is pounding. Ah, the tea will fix that. Wouldn't worry about that. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, be skeptical. I don't know. I'm at not in it's of vibrations. Maybe I shouldn't have said yes to mushroom tea. <laughs> Too late now. This is the result. Often take a day or, or, or two, or to get in tune with the vibrations. Okay. Uh, yeah. Be, it's being inquisitive. The vibrations. You can feel them. Maybe it's just the mushroom tea. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's the altitude or the way the wind shudders through the pines. Maybe it's cosmic rays, I couldn't tell you, but Laburnum Creek does something to people. Cosmic rays, but Laburnum Creek does something to people. I think the camera is doing something to people. Look, at it. I'm not I'm not touching the mouse, it's just wobbling around like on its own. Uh, what? Look. Now let's get you unpacked. Okay. So, who are we talking to now? Okay, let's let's get you unpacked. I was just <coughs> Jesus Christ! Don't surprise me like that. Wait, wait, where, what, what, where are we now? Woo! Oh, I'm in a psychiatrist's office. Okay, I, I've I've been kind of like goofing around with this, but I do like the aesthetic of it. I I, I you know like the sort of coziness of it. I, I do kind of like that. Who are you? My psychiatrist, apparently. Now I'm on a dock! Boy, this game is giving me whiplash. It, it does... It, it feels a little janky in places. Oh, look at that water. Fancy, fancy. Okay, it feels a little janky. But... And I'm guessing unoptimized, but I do think this is pretty, and I am having fun with it. Can I go in the water? Can I jump? 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 No. Can we? Uh, can we go for a swim? Let's see. No, no, no. We can't. Uh, we can't jump off. Okay. In the drink you go. No, no. I'll just, I'll just quietly glide along the edge of the pier. Can we run? Yes, we can. With shift. Oh. Press M to show the map. Okay, I got about five minutes left to uh, to, to explore this place. 
So I have, I have a... Ooh, okay, this is cool. This is cool. Can I go to the store? Oh, okay, I can. Okay, I like this. I'm liking this. All right, enough fucking around. Let's go and actually do something. Press M to show map. Thank you. But Well, that's sort of catapulted in my face as well. Map. Wow, what do we have here? We've got, got quite a map. I want to go to the abandoned town, thank you. That's kind of neat here. Seeing the abandoned town for the first time was kind of surreal. Okay. So I'm still talking to my counselor right now. Now, do I want to go inside one of the houses or do I want to explore outside? I just kind of want to run around. I, I, okay. All, all these houses look, look, look kind of similar. Press M to show map. No, I don't want the map. Oh, 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 but I can go rifle through her shit. This engine, this 3D engine is... Whoa! Gratuitous, but shut is gratuitous. Uh, this engine is not really suited suited for interiors. I would imagine most of this game takes place outside. Now, I guess there's people living in in all of these uh, all of these houses. So maybe we can go visit and talk to talk to them. Like if if we can get up the front steps here. Oh my god! Like the front steps are blocked for some reason. I I, I wonder if it's just blocked off in the demo. Or if there's just like like so many uh, so many plants that we can't actually get through. How about here? Okay, no, it's it's not just the plants. Yeah, like I guess in the demo um, we can't visit all, all the buildings. It, it, it would be nice if there if there was like a, a message that came up saying you know like you know you can't play this in the demo or something because otherwise it looks look, looks kind of <laughs> it looks kind of funny. Okay, let's get out of this frame-murdering nightmare hellish cabin. All right, M for map. Fine, we'll go to the map. Cabin village, tourist info store, abandoned town. Uh, that's what we got. I like abandoned towns. Let's go there. The stuff people left behind was just standing around. Can I climb on it? Yes, it was a ghost town. Oh, okay. I like the detail. I like the, uh, the effort that's gone into this. The stuff people left behind was just standing around. It was a ghost town. Oh, we're in George Stobart. What? It's George Stobart style narration. Okay. I do like that you can sort of roam around. That's pretty cool. I kind of just want to like explore really impressed with how pretty all of this is i will say though there's a lot like it's big god this is this is a really strict time limit i mean you know e even with the demo like there's only so much you can do in uh, in 15 minutes you know i was gonna ask who came up with this time limit of uh, 15 minutes it's it's just it's just not enough time oh wait i don't think i'm supposed to be able to move here so, okay, so unlocking, so the, I think what happened is the map let me move again. Oh, never mind. That's not even a trick. You can just wander around with, with, with this. Tell me about Raymond while I run off the screen. <laughs> oh, shit, there's a lot to this little towny village thing. I seem to be stuck on a guardrail, however. Oh, I cannot walk up these steps. For unclear reasons. Whoa, what are we... Oh, can I crash? Oh, can I crash the car? Can I drive like a maniac? Woo! Psh. Well, if I can't crash the car, I don't know what I'm doing here. Woo! Let's see, where's, where's Maggie? Well... She's not here. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, okay. We're, just, we're just we're like climbing all over her furniture here. Can we climb on the bed? No. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. Can I can I run off the cliff here? 
<laughs> How far can I take this? How far can I run away? Okay, I am going to be under the impression... <laughs> as if that's something you elect. I'm going to be under the impression that uh, something will happen to me if I just keep exploring. Perhaps I can go inside one of these. Oh, that's 15 minutes already. I was like, I was like, what? What, what, what is that noise? Oh, it's my alarm. I really want to do something else, <laughs> something else here before I finish. Like we just got here and uh, I haven't really done anything. I feel like 15 minutes is perhaps not long enough to get an accurate first impression when you're talking about adventure games. But anyway, that's my, that's, that's my bad. All right. So that's 15 minutes. I, but I want to see how far I can go and continue this conversation. Hold on a second. I have to see this. Oh my god, I can walk so far here. Okay, we're gonna walk to the end of the dock. I just want to ask you, if, who is she even talking to? Can we talk? Where is everyone? Um, maybe, maybe it's just because it's the demo and there's actually there's actually no one else to uh, to interact with. I'm not sure. I'm not even I'm not even sure where Maggie went to. Well, all right, I guess. Okay, well, it's been 50 minutes and I guess I'm going to have to leave it here. Ah, now I got to walk all the way back. Okay. Well, that's what 15 minutes of peaceful mountain exploring gets us. What kind of first impression did that leave on our pack of wolfies? Let's find out. One short eye is up first. So what to say about that game? The idea that there's like this comet that's going to come and kill people, but they're staying there is, is a little bizarre. There's sort of this surreal quality to it, and I think the the 3D physics of it being a little bit off kind of adds to that. I did like the aesthetic of it. Um, I'm kind of into forests and things like that, cabins, th those sorts of places are always neat to explore. I know it's just a demo, and maybe this is unfair of me to say, but I wish that I understood more of what was in the introduction. And it took me a moment to figure out what I was supposed to be doing. But um, other than that, yeah, I, I, I kind of enjoyed that in like a little bit of a wonky way. So, um, yeah. And that leaves us with a score of three from One Short Eye. Now over to Adventure Game Geek, who was, shall we say, slightly perturbed at how quickly time ran out for him. What are my thoughts uh, on this game? Uh, well, you know, uh, I, I'd like to, uh, you know, I'd like to see more of it. It's it's not exactly the kind of uh, uh, the kind of style of game that uh, that I usually play. But yeah, uh, it was it was definitely definitely worth giving it a go. Yeah, it, it definitely needs some more kind of backstory, you know, and you got You got to find out what exactly we're doing here and who we can interact with and 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 all of that. So I'm not really sure like how much more of the game like this demo. Comes covers but uh i didn't really do do very much except for uh drinking some uh magic mushroom tea so yeah i, I, I guess i guess that's something so there you go okay all right uh, I, I don't really have much else to say about this uh so that's it okay agg out and that's a three from adventure game geek as well for myself well i mean my initial reactions to this yeah it's uh it's got nice world building. The the 3D is, I mean, it's it's not mind blowing or anything. It is serviceable. It's um a little finicky on the control side, and uh, the inability of her to scale tiny inclines like this is uh, a a bit weird. You'd imagine you could at least just step up, or there's a climb or a jump key or something. I know jumping would be a little weird, but um. I'm intrigued. Uh, one thing that uh, that unforeseen incidents did very well was that it also had an interesting world where there was uh, uh, an underlying menace, uh, mystery kind of thing, like something was just bubbling under the surface kind of thing. And I'm, I'm getting the same vibe here. Uh, we've got a nice serene location. Everything's nice and colorful and something awful is going to happen, obviously. Uh, the thing that kind of irks me about this is... Yeah, the, uh, the 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 camera is really finicky and and kind of kind of hyper. You would expect uh, you expect more languid controls for games like this. And interiors, navigating interiors is not very intuitive. You might want to lock off the camera. I know that that invites tank controls, but uh, you might want to lock off the camera when you're in in, in interiors. And obviously, uh, you're gonna need some optimization because this huge outdoor area 
runs fine on my machine, but walk inside one overzealous greenskeeper's cabin and all of a sudden the frame rate fucking tanks. That speaks to a bit of an optimization bit. Did you did you individually model each leaf on every one of those plants? Because that is that is next level shit. Oh, and also the, the jarring jump cuts to her psychiatrist where you just kind of boom, fade out. Now we're in a different location. Boom, now we're back somewhere else. Also a bit jarring. I don't know if you could like um like have a like have a speech bubble or something that uh, keeps you where you are and then just sort of uh, takes over the screen like a little bit, like a, like you have this little, like an insert of the psychiatrist office, like, okay, this is what, ha th th this is where we are now kind of thing or something so, so that you're not like, as the player instantly transported out of where you are into some new scene and you have to get your bearings because you still have mouse control and you're like scattered looking all over the fucking room and then three seconds later after two lines of dialogue boom you're now back to where you were or someplace entirely different now you're suddenly sitting on a pier it's a, it's a it was a bit jarring yeah so uh, those minor quibbles aside I, I i can I, I can sense that this is gonna go someplace right oh oh score uh four out of five yeah optimization and quirky controls and jarring transitions aside i think this has uh, this has promise it's gonna be a good uh, good mystery uh, Unforeseen Incidents was uh, a pretty good game with some, yeah, some some quirks and some really idiotic puzzles. At least they made me feel like an idiot. Uh, but the story was good, uh, and clearly these people know how to craft a, a, a good story. On that note alone, I'm, I'm excited to see where this one is going. But hey, that's 15 minutes of fame for We Stay Behind. Bye. Yeah, big old score of four, and that rhymes. Yay. Now, lastly, from Anna, who had this to say. <clears throat> Not my thing. But I don't think it was terrible for what it was. Well, that's about as diplomatic as you can get. And that translates into a score of three. So that's obviously me being terribly biased and the rest of our vicious wolf pack being in touch with reality. But, well, you can't argue with cold heart science. So in the end, that leaves We Stay Behind with a total wolfy score of 13. Still not massively impressive thus far. The eagle-eyed, mathematically inclined viewer out there will no doubt have realized by now that the maximum score a game can get is a cool 20. And so far we're just hovering a little bit above the halfway mark. So let's see if the next game can tip the scale forward somewhat favorably. Next up is Sons of Saturn. Now this game wasn't sent to me, but actually landed with an unceremonious thud in Adventure Game Geek's inbox. And the devs pitched it as an old school adventure game made up of photos of real life abandoned locations and also something about frail psyches and wart colonized brains. So it sounds like we're in for a fun time indeed. Uh, just a brief note about this game before we get started. For some reason, this game played absolute havoc with Anna's recording setup. So don't adjust your set. Try to see past the somewhat choppy frame rate in her clips. But anyway, right, let's get on with it. So let's start a new game and check it out. Hmm. Is that a puppet or a real person? Ah! Just hanging out, I see. This is already... The, the whole theater setting, abandoned theater, uh, uh, I guess we're in a horror setting or something, kind of reminds me of that Korean game uh, where you're walking around an abandoned school, the name escapes me. I'm, get, I'm, getting, I'm getting like Harvester vibes from this already. The sleep is restless and unending. Your mind is tossed about in a shallow tidal pool, slamming against barnacles and corals. Every sliver of exposed tissue is being pecked at by crabs and crocodiles. You know, the text is a little hard to read because of the black shadows on top. Oh, it's a, it's a reading game. <laughs> the sleep is restless and unending. Your mind is tossed in a shallow tidal pool, slamming against barnacles and corals. Every sliver of exposed tissue pecked by crabs and crocodiles. Boy, that metaphor sure gets around, doesn't it? Okay, this is interesting. Um, raise your head and face reality. Oh, hi. Raise your head and face reality. Keep sulking in the moist, comfortable puddle you've carved out for yourself. I'm going to keep sulking. Raise your head and face reality. Or keep sulking in the moist, comfortable puddle you've carved out for yourself. Uh, okay, well, what if, we, uh, what if we keep sulking? What happens? That is no longer an option! The haphazard equilibrium of tensile forces holding your brain together has finally given way! Tendons are snapping, bridges are resonating. Bridges are resonating! Oing, 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 oing. And pedestrians are getting injured! Cool. This metaphor is very confusing at this point. Oh, right. So, so, so we're, we're the puppet on, on the strings. That's interesting. Okay. 
This is a little bizarre. I think I like it. There you go. No more running away. Oh, it's a nice place to be. I deserve this, don't I? The lights, they hurt, but in a weirdly satisfying way. To hell with the light, with being able to see. It stings! Ah! The lights are cleansing you like a hungry dog biting off a drunkard's sugar-laden diabetic toes. That's an interesting description. What? The lights are cleansing you like a hungry dog biting off a drunkard's sugar-laden diabetic toes. Okay. Uh, to hell with lights, with being able to see, it stings! Ah! If that's the attitude you're gonna adopt, you might as well just gouge your eyes out. You got no use for it. Probably a sharp wooden fragments are scattered about the stage for you to choose from. Yeah! Now we're talking. <laughs> Let's go. Wait, before I gouge out my own eyes, that's something. Okay, this is gonna. Just gotta check. Who am I? You're a human being, with all of the deluxe features 160 centimeters, 60 kilograms. 26 years old, female, and inexplicably muscular. Female and inex inexplicably muscular. That's good to know. This is weird, and I think I like it. The contours of your face are beautiful and sharp and hard. They cut. I want to be tall and lanky and feminine, like a borzoi hound wearing makeup. Very, uh, this is very interesting. Very, uh, how, how to describe the writing. Um, I don't know. It's it's very. Uh, I can't. I can't even think of the word. It's like a borzoi hound wearing makeup. Apparently, what what is a borzoi hound? A borzoi was once known as the Russian wolfhound. This sight hound is a courser of immense strength and stamina, bred bred by the Russian aristocracy in the 17th century to hunt wolf in large packs of over a hundred or more hounds. Today, they still chase anything that moves, but their intelligence and gentle nature also make them a wonderful companion. Okay. Trigger warning here. Hazy memories return to you. You feel your ex punching you in the jaw. Ow. Her knuckles catch your right canine deeply gashing her index finger. She's too embarrassed to seek treatment, and the joint grows deeply infected. Who am I supposed to feel sorry for here? Well, this is pleasant. She is spared amputation, but the infection consumes all nerves past the first link. She will never use the outermost two-thirds of her index finger ever again. So, okay, so someone we dated nearly lost her finger after punching us. That's not who you are, and you never will be. Why must you torture us with that fixation? Oh, sorry, sorry. I I have a fixation with Borzoi hounds. I'm sorry. It's my bad. Okay, but, like, why don't you like me? Me? Malformed lump. Mal wait, malformed. It changed from a voice to a malformed lump. Oh, hi, malformed lump. I love you, and I need you, and you need me. Is this like a character creation thing? Do I have... I had a girlfriend, that means I'm cool, right? I had a girlfriend, that means I'm cool. You did manage to keep her for very long. Nope, that's because I kept ducking. Uh, but yes, that does mean you're above. That does mean you're above. Oh... So close. If you want, if you want, to, if you're gonna get flowery with all your metaphors and your uh, weird way of writing, which I, I appreciate and respect and all that, yeah, got a spell check. Come on. If if you're going for this type of narration and this type of writing, yeah, got a spell check. All right, let's move on here. What's up with the theater? Where am I? Hell. Oh. 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 We're in hell. Right. Of course. Where am I? Hell. Cool. Always wanted to visit. Just kidding, you're not really in hell. Aww. Uh, oh, just kidding. <laughs> oh, that was funny. I, I, I always find it amusing when people say I'm in hell and then say, just kidding. Just kidding, you're not really in hell. You're not really in a theater either. You're taking a nap in a wastewater tunnel? Why am I in a sewer? You're in a sewer because it's the only way to reach your goal, Minerva. Not Nirvana, Minerva, the underground city you were born in, the ruin you fled from. You're taking a nap in the sewer because you're exhausted and you've gotten a bit ahead of your guide, the ferryman. He was tracking his feet. This is getting metaphysical. Uh, now we're now we're dragging in uh, like River Styx type of uh, lore and mythological shite. Is that is that the ferryman to hell? I I thought they said we weren't in hell. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I trust this malformed lump. 
oh, I have to find out what happened to my mom. Who has not been mentioned yet at any point. Mother? You mean the woman you left behind in your escape? And then, wait, what am I doing? Oh, you gotta find out what happened to your mom. Oh, the mom you left behind. Well, you know. I didn't exactly... I gotta get through this or I'm not gonna get to the gameplay, right? Your purpose right now, your mission, if you choose to accept it, is finding out what happened to your mom after you ran away and left her behind. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> yeah, I've got a fucking few. I have a few questions about the potato tumor I've been conversing with these last few minutes. I like the subtle, like, nasty humor that this game has already. I mean, this could have gone super serious, and it kind of sounded like it was at the start. But it has it has a sense of humor, and I, I, I like that. I'm, I'm going to go with the potato tumor. Oh, me? Yes, why did you turn white? My name is Jasper. I'm the vintage plush cat doll you've been hiding in your shirt pocket for the last two decades. Did you forget me? Don't you remember? Okay, I'm skipping. I'm, I'm glossing through a lot of this because... I, just for the sake of this video, I want to get to some gameplay. Don't you think it's about time you woke up? Yes. Because uh, I want to get to playing the game. Don't you think it's about time you woke up? Yes! Yes, please get me out of here. I've got tunnels to crawl through and expectations to fall short of. My words exactly. All right, just keep in mind, not all your parts are going to wake up at once. Your arms, your, yeah, yeah, I know how this. I've been hung over before. The entrance of the administrative ward is just up ahead. Follow me. Let's get going. Uh, let's get going then. Okay, okay, we, we have like a minute left. Oh, okay, and this this is this is the actual game. Okay, so now we get to control things. Can only go forward. Good fucking lord, it's a dungeon crawler. Mother of God. Wait, can I go back? Okay, it won't let me go back. This is pretty fucking cool, actually. Um, all right, well, uh, I guess uh, f 15 minutes is uh, actually not, not really enough time to uh, to fully explore this demo. There's uh, like there's actually quite a lot of... Uh, a, a lot of content because it's it's not just uh, it's not just the gameplay. There's a lot of a lot of reading and text involved. Uh, yeah, like uh, you know, like really well written, like in, uh, intriguing stuff. Um, and it's definitely the kind of thing that uh, you know that I that I enjoy. Um, well, I'm not sure enjoy is quite the right word, but uh, I, I, I'm always intrigued by these kind of psycho uh, horror psychological uh, stories. We are in the hospital's mortuary. If you take a peek through the doorframe to your left, you'll see the coolers. I cannot not take a peek. That is misspelled. That's not, that's not a peek, that's a peek. You peek around the corner and are greeted by enormous 18 potty morgue. Nice. Okay, so we're in a morgue. Minerva usually responds more mercifully when the client takes the lead. I thought Minerva was the city. Uh, why did this hospital need an 18-body cooler? That seems excessive. Well, no, not really. Oh, 15 minutes are up already. No, I wanted to get to the next uh, dungeon crawler thing. Uh, damn it. Can I cheat? I, wow, okay. Okay, so now we can, like, move around, but I can't, okay. I like that there's a little map. That's cool. So this is cool. So I just want to see what happens if I click on these guys. Nothing. I like the little mini map. I like. Uh... Oh. And then we can proceed south. I do. I okay. I will say I do like that they have a map up here. I will give them that. Why is this door bricked off? Bet there's something good on the other side. Look out the window. This place just has random doors to nowhere. We should search the offices, or rather, that's my recommendation. Okay. You find encrusted, tattered notebook lying in the bottom right corner. The name Vera Silkwood is scribbled on the cover. 
Good find. The notebook probably belonged to one of the accountants. You might glean a few things by flipping through it. Okay. Feel bad, difficulty getting up, unappetized at lunch, foggy in the afternoon. I would have written the same on days. Getting promoted to maternity ward. What an infuriating euphemism. The pay is the same, the work is less important, and I'm surrounded by babies that are screaming. Nice. Let's go up ahead a bit. Let's go over here. Ooh. Another office. Rummage through the desk. Telegram cards. One more about Vera. Interesting. This is cool. This is a great way to do um, pseudo first person note based uh, navigation because you're see, one of the things that really uh, annoy me about games like uh, Rippers, Seventh Guest, uh, those games that use uh, locked off camera angles and then you click some some hotspot there and it sort of transitions into where you're going. You're never really quite sure where it's going to take you. Like the hotspot doesn't indicate where you're gonna go uh, in seventh guest. It's just the uh, finger going like that, and in uh, in Black Dahlia, for instance, it's it's all, it's just a, a compass point that just points in a vague direction, but you're never really sure where it's gonna go. Here, you you're given a mini map and you're given clear north, south, east, west uh, direction. It's like a it's like an old Infocom game actually. Boy, that that tooltip is really small. And it says, show on hover. Something tells me that's not supposed to be there. Interesting exchange, but it doesn't tell us about your mom, other than that she didn't want Vera hanging around the Saturn core. Why were we so terrified of Vera? W what makes you wonder what they were trying to hide? Yeah, I don't know. Could be anything too nefarious. They were willing to leave the telegrams like this unsecured in office drawers. It was nothing serious. If it was, they'd be more cautious. All right. Let's go find the rest of Vera's diary entries. There's a trash chute. Little... It's making a weird noise. There's a pair of loose... Okay, we're gonna have to stick... <laughs> yeah, I knew it. Knew we'd have to stick our hand in there. Your arm is quickly enveloped by an unknown mossy texture. Free the papers. These are the next two diary entries. Nothing else. Okay, back out. <laughs> I was wondering why you used to... Okay, so he can't hear Jasper, I'm guessing. So, okay. it's some, There's malpractice causing stillbirth. Let's go down. Ooh, okay. You come to a stop after... Ooh. Unfortunately, we will not get to know what this is because our time is up. That's 15 minutes. Your guide slinks to the side of the door without making a sound. He moves like a cat. He peers around the corner of the door frame. After taking a look, the ferryman rounds the corner and enters the room. Several moments pass in silence. Say something. Hey, champ, everything okay in there? But you hear the door slam shut. You instinctively run up to the door and peer through the gate and the ferryman is staring back at you. Well, it's not on his own, in a way that marionettes don't move on their own. Have you heard of sorts of incidents infiltrators sometimes report near the Saturn core? Of course. Everyone knows what happened to people near the core. Hallucinations, time stretching, seeing people who've been dead for 20 years. They are not hallucinations. <laughs> And unfortunately, we're going to have to cut it there because shortly after this, Anna finally realized she was out of time and cut the video. So if you want to see more, a uh, quick reminder, the links to the demos are in the video description. Anyway, let's see what our wolves had to say about this one, starting again with the Eye of Shortness. Uh, I think so far that was the most intriguing of the three that I've played. That is the one I, out of all of them so far, I will probably go back and finish. Very text heavy. So, you know, that's I apologies for not reading more of it, but I wanted to see more of the game. Very weird vibe, very surreal. I was digging that. I was digging it. I think that's that's what I'm gonna go back and replay. Good job. You 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 intrigued me, sons of Saturn devs. 
Okay, that's a score of 4.5 and a fairly solid recommendation from One Short Eye. Let's see if the geek with the fleek was similarly enthralled. I guess uh, f 15 minutes is uh, actually not not really enough time to uh, to fully explore this demo. There's uh, like there's actually quite a lot of uh, a, a lot of content because it's it's not just uh, it's not just the gameplay. There's a lot of a lot of reading and text involved. Uh, yeah, like uh, you know, like really well written, like in, uh, intriguing stuff. Um, and it's definitely the kind of thing that uh, you know that I that I enjoy. Um, well, I'm not sure enjoy is quite the right word, but uh, I, I'm always intrigued by these kind of psycho uh, horror psychological uh, stories. Yeah, like any story or story where you wake up and you you know you don't know who you are, and you, you might not even be entirely human. I'm not really sure. And and you know you have to explore like an underground city and and everything and so yeah this is uh yeah this is definitely this is definitely my kind of game uh maybe maybe not for everyone but uh, but yeah I I definitely enjoyed this uh, this uh, fifteen minutes and um it's definitely something that uh, I'd like to explore further all right that's it for me okay A G G out and that's a solid four from our friend in the United Kingdom. Now over here in Denmark, here's what my appalling human form had to say. This is intriguing. I like this. I like the art style. I like the writing. It got a little metaphor heavy at the start, and I was afraid we're going to get into, oh, like 90s uh, industrial goth lyric type territory, but it actually has a sense of humor, and I really like the sense of humor. It speaks to me. Uh, I, like I said, I take the art style and I think that the navigation is super interesting. I, obviously, I'm going to get lost a bit, uh, but uh, this this has promise. Uh, I don't know if we're going to include voice acting. I'm actually kind of leaning towards don't do it because uh, this is more of a... It's, it's more of a literary thing. I'm going to give this a 4.5. I wasn't going to do decimals, but I'm going to give this a 4.5 because I think it's a little more intriguing than We Stay Behind. Not only because the, you know, the navigation, uh, the writing is also better. Also, the mystery is up front. We, we still have a slow burn uh, towards where we're going, but the mystery is up front. We start in medias res and, and uh, everything is surreal and, and it's intriguing right from the get-go. Uh, if, you're, if you're playing a game, you want that instantaneous motivation to keep going. And I feel like with the We Stay Behind, it's more of a, uh, uh, something's going to happen eventually. Uh, uh, Bend Oak Island was the same. This is like, we arrive somewhere, and uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm just going to walk around because I, I picked up this game and I launched it, and now I'm going to invest some time in it. I don't know why. But here, you get... This is what we're doing. This is where we're going. Let's fucking go, man. And then you can bring the pace down again and get us acclimatized to it and and all that shit. I even like how they had a little tutorial at the start where you're just moving through the sewer. Just to say, okay, this is what navigation's gonna look like. You know, beware. But anyway, now I've rambled on long enough. 4.5 uh, for this one, even though I don't know why I'm giving scores out. But anyway, bye, Chronostream. See ya. So far, doing very good. Two 4.5s and a 4. Meanwhile, up in Canada, the land whose primary exports are politeness and industrial bands for some reason, Anna had this to say, ahem, might have rated this higher if I didn't have trouble running it on my low-end laptop. Interesting concept for sure. Okay, and her score is also a solid four. So, in total, I think we're doing a lot better with this one. That's 17 Wolfie points in total. Definitely one we're going to keep our eyes open for in the future. And now it's time to see if the last game on our list can keep the steady upwards climb going. This one is called A Lively Haunt. And right off the bat, it dangles a promising carrot at us. To my knowledge, this is the first ever hot seat multiplayer adventure game. Uh, you can play this as just a single player, and that is how we all played it. But what you're really meant to do is find someone in your social circles whose spell you can stand and who's just as keen on old school parser adventures as you are, stick an extra keyboard in your computer, slap it on their laps, get some snacks and maybe a humidifier going, and then play this game old school co-op style. So how does that work exactly? Well, let's find out. All right, going in for a lively haunt. I'm looking forward to this one. Hmm. Uh, the creator said it was a text adventure 
or a parser adventure thingy for two players. So let's see. Oh, hi. Excuse me for just a second. Ah. <laughs> Okay. Controls. Okay, arrow keys. Um, move your character. Tap once. No need to hold keys down. Tab. Tab is swap character controls. Shit. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I'm okay. I, I I think I got it. I like the PC speaker sound. Honestly. I'm into it. Uh, obviously, low res, pixely shit. Control. Ah! My screen's too big for this. Okay, how many players will be attending? Uh, one. And I guess with with two players, uh, you would need uh, yeah, you would need two keyboards. I guess. All right, so here we go. Character creation. Okay. I see. Um, I will be a boy. And not sure what to do. Oh, there we go. Okay, it took me a second because I thought it was like mouse based. Okay. Uh, rotate does not do it. I'm clicking on rot. Oh, wait, does the mouse not do anything? Oh, okay. So that's something I'm gonna have to get used to. The 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 mouse or sorry, the mouse does not do anything. Let's see. Uh, color hair. Let's go with. Mm hmm. Uh, this is an important choice. Actually, no, I'm gonna go with Roger Wilco here. I'm gonna make him blonde. Go. What am I adjusting here? Oh, I'm adjusting his, uh, his hair color. Oh, yeah, uh, you can actually customize the color. That's interesting. Wow, wow, this is, this is, this is almost as complicated as the Baldur's Gate 3 character creation. And I'm going to name you Douglas. My name is Dopo Glass. Hi, Douglas. Oh, I like your hair. Thank you. Gonna go full Roger. And I'm gonna call him Roger. Okie doke. Finalized. Waiting. We're gonna go female with this one. I am going female, right? I'm an idiot. <laughs> going female with this one. Alright. Complete idiot, actually. Right. Beatrice, off you go. Now do a spin for me, honey. Cheers. Off we go. Let's see. Um, what's our name besides Jill? Well, it's obviously not Jill, is it? Um, okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put A G G. Um. Yeah, why don't we go with this? That's fine. All right. Uh, let's see. Second character. Let's choose female. And uh, hmm. Uh, what name? Should I call them? Oh. Uh, you know what, we'll just keep this, this default so we can get into the game quicker. Let's go classy style. And we're gonna call this, kinda looks like a melody. Oh God, oh, come on. Uh, let, me, let me think of a name. Mary. Mary? Okay, thank you. Got you already spent way too much time on this. The game uses a text parser. Do you know what a text parser is? This game uses a text parser, meaning you type your actions. It can be a bit daunting. Would you like to tutorial tips? Um, no. Would you like some tutorial tips? No, nah, man, I'm going in raw hard. Let's do this. I can't tell if this is 256 color or 16 color. If it's 16 color, it's really, really good. Uh, it does look 256 color-ish. We've got some dithering going on, so it's not like high- She teleported between trees! I'm on to you. You also have no face. Oh, well that's not creepy. Do 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 off on a nice family vacation. We didn't see anything weird on the side of the road. We're okay. Okay. Car is starting to power down. Spaghettios. Some flickering in Bia's face, but that's okay. 
And you can tell this actually runs in the appropriate resolution. This isn't like fake, like it, it, this is 1920 by 1080. And uh, and then you, you like make big pixels to make it look like it's a pixel art uh, bent Oak Island did that. Eh. This is actually running in a proper post-it stamp size resolution, which is cool. And look at this. So you can swap between two text parsers. How fucking awesome is that? All right, uh, talk. But the question is, which one am I? I would assume the first one is Roger and the next one is B, because, you know, player one and two. So, punch man. She did it! Oh, your car is messed up. Womp womp. You know what? I bet you we just didn't walk around the car first to make sure it was all all right. So before we get out, we should probably pop the hood. Um, let's see. Pull release. Okay, excellent. Cool. Well, we pop the hood. So let's uh, let's get out, shall we? Uh, we have to open the door first. Open door. Okay, get out. Ah, uh, a bit of a glidey animation. Ka ka she's kind of like, uh, like if you reverse the sprite uh, direction, she would be moonwalking. Open hood. Forgot to release the hood latch. Uh, release hood. Not from here, it should be, okay, so I need to go here. Release hood. Okay, so that's so the 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 whole thing of the game is going to be like one character can do things that the other can't. So back up here, open hood, look engine, fix car, fucking hell! Ah! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Um, engine. Oh my god! Wait, what happened? Oh shit! Okay, well, that didn't go well. Um, Roger, maybe you should get out and help her. Oh, is is, is this where the two-player aspect comes in? Um, you gotta switch, switch players, and then the other player can, like, pop the hood. Pull... release, I think it is? Oh! Oh, we actually have to physically get out. Hang on, okay, wait. Well, hello there. Open hood. Hi. That looks like fire. I'm surprised your face is still alive. My God, that would have hurt. Oh my God, it's on fire. Holy shit. Uh, how, 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 how did we not catch fire? And like our, fa our face would have been all burnt off. Okay, I thought we were dead. Time to come up with a plan B. Well, plan B is, first of all, to switch to the numpad and realize, to my horror and discontent, that you cannot move diagonally. You can only move up, down, left, right. You cannot move diagonally. Uh, that is terrible. I think we need to leave. Can we leave? Is that possible? Okay. Woo! Can we just go? Thanks, I'm glad you came with me, friend. I guess you just kind of hang out there. Let me take the lead there, little mister. I'm gonna keep uh, B in the lead. Nice. Looks sign. Some kind of informational plaque. It's been, it has an illustration of a Victorian era looking building and a bunch of text. Great text. The name of the walled in property is given as a, as Brennan house. Sorry, the text is like huge. You know how it's, it's, it's hard to read small text, you lean in, you squint, but no one ever says anything about big chunks of text. So this font is massive. Um, not that I'm complaining necessarily, but it's, um, I kind of have to adjust because the characters are this size. So my eyes are adjusted to this size. This font is like gargantuan. Okay, let's see. Let's see if anyone's home. Open gate. It's locked. What a surprise. Can we climb? Climb gate? Uh, maybe there's an easier way. Okay. Can I boost? No, because I can't interact with the other character. I can't boost woman? Boost Bea? Bo oh, I'd probably call her Beatrice, actually. No? <laughs> Didn't work. Uh, so what is this thing? Open... Is that a mailbox? 
But it is empty. Okay. Okay, let's carry on. At least we're not in the middle of nowhere. Well, we got a power line here. What is that leaning against the uh, tree there? Look, pole. The pole holds a lot of wet work of high voltage power lines. Not going anywhere near that. Come on, honey, let's fuck off. Oh, dude, we've had an issue. Oh, did I just die? Okay. Sweet. Clearly, I can die. Jump guard rail. Oh! That actually worked. Oh my god. Oh, dear lord. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're not supposed to do that. Can I climb this rail? Yes, I can! That was a bad idea. Okay, so don't go in the forest! Ah! Also, don't go that way! I thought it'd be like a doorbell or something. Okay, maybe there's a way around. Oh my god. What's what's happened here? This this looks dangerous and we could get electrocuted. Um I, I was hoping to go into the into the forest though to uh you know see, see if we can find that uh faceless woman that we saw earlier. Don't do it. Let's see, climb over uh what do you say, fence? Oh, Oh, we can! Holy shit! What? <laughs> what? 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 What the hell? Let's go this way, friend, shall we? Oh shit! Well, that did not go well. Interesting. Okay, yeah, that that is one uh, dangerous forest. Holy shit! Holy shit! <laughs> oh my! Oh my god! Wow. Okay. Not not the safest place to uh, uh to break down. I guess we're like we're surra surrounded by by death. Okay. We need to get into the gate and into the house. And it's locked. Is there anything else we can look at here? A wrought iron gate. Okay. Climb gate. Maybe there's an easier way past. Open gate. Gate is locked. Unlock gate. I wonder if it's like the kind of puzzle where the two of us need to work together to figure it out. Can I climb wall? The wall is high, sheer, and topped by a pointed iron railing. Other than some small surface cracks, the tight brickwork offers no handholds whatsoever. Uh, can I do like a little boost here? Give boost. No. Yell at gate. Okay. No, nothing. Kinda like would appreciate some response. Kiss girlfriend. Kiss girl. Fuck off. What, what am I, how am I supposed to get in here? Squeeze through. Aww. So close and yet so far away. Oh, squeeze, squeeze through bars. Walk, walk through bars. Um, squeeze through bars. Yeah. And get mauled. Oh, that's 15 minutes darn. And I think I just figured something out too. Okay. I guess that's it. Thanks for uh, the time. Oh. Actually, this doesn't look too bad, does it? Where are we at? We're in the grounds of some sort of spacious estate, so large house is semi-visible. A uh, footpath runs from the iron gate to the house, and a series of concrete stepping stones lead through a break in the bushes to the west. One thing that uh, annoys me slightly, and I have to pick one thing, obviously, is that the text boxes do a quick fade in and fade out. I want them to be instantaneous. Look, mailbox. Full hook. Full hook. Look hook. 
For some reason, you have an odd sense of something's about to happen. Well, in that case, you take point, Raj. Can I? Should I save my game? F5 does nothing. Can I save? No! Fuck you, then. Pull mailbox. Push mailbox. 8017. I don't know if we're getting into this today. Um, knock door. The animation is really smooth, and I, I appreciate that. Diagonal movement would be nice. Smaller font would be nice. Uh, no fading on the text boxes would be nice. Other than that, I am digging this. Knock. Knock on gate. Rattle gate. Yell for help. Punch self. So, oh, we're out of time already. Okay, can I at least, and this is what I really want to know, can I at least pee in the bush? <laughs> well, I think I can comfortably say that's the first time I've ever managed to be the first person in the room to solve a puzzle before everyone else. Although, if we're being fair, both Anna and One Short Eye should technically have gotten it as well. I mean, One Short Eye said squeeze through, but he didn't specify the gate in particular. And Anna's command of climb through gate is also something I would assumed would have worked, but uh, I guess the parser assumed climb meant she wanted to scale the gate like some sort of Canadian spider woman, and it completely ignored the modifier through, so I'm not going to pat myself on the back too hard for that one. That's really more a case of the parser being a bit of a fucking stickler than me being anything that closely approximates clever. But anyway, those little linguistic quirks aside, how did our wolves get on with this multiplayer adventure? I, I was intrigued by that. I liked that. I'm frustrated I didn't get farther, but I was intrigued by it. I want to get farther. So there, there's that there. One thing I worry about is that the whole gimmick of the two player thing with the parser is really interesting. But I think I, I wonder this is not not like a fear, but I, I wonder if it's going to feel like a satisfying experience to play it single player switching between the two because i think that can work but i could also imagine possibly that becoming an experience that just feels like why can't i just be one character right i wonder how that's going to get pulled off anyway those are the four games first of all game dev is difficult kudos to every one of these developers for even putting out a game in the first place i think my favorite was probably sons of saturn that's felt like the most sort of complete experience so far it was weird in a really intriguing way i kind of i really liked that and then uh a lively haunt looks really cool and uh and um hope to get back to it i'd say out of the four i'm most likely to actually go back and finish sons of saturn and with a very close second being a lively haunt but anyway thanks for uh for taking a watch appreciate it catch you later damn i had a burp sitting in my throat the whole duration of that speech. Uh, hang on. Come on, get out. Get out, you lazy fuck. Ah, now it's retreated into my gullet and it won't come out. Come on. <laughs> come on. Mother of God. Oh, that was a wimpy one, too. Come on. Ah, oh, you rat bastard. Oh, well. And one short eye drops a solid four in the mailbox he was obsessing over. I mean, seriously, I cut out about six solid minutes of him fucking around with that mailbox. Anyway, over to Adventure Game Geek. So, uh, yeah, like, what, what are my thoughts on this game? Uh, it's great. Uh, I, I, I actually really enjoy it. And the, and the two-player aspect is, uh, you know, also a really nice touch, really interesting. And so I'm sure there'll be other puzzles which will, you know, require you to use to use your teamwork like that and to like you know switch players and everything yeah yeah this is great i, I think out of the four games that i played i think uh so the four yeah the four demos that i played for this uh i think this is the one i probably most enjoyed actually so yeah so i i, I was happy to get it to get it working because i said because as i said before um it didn't recognize my uh my laptop keyboard which i think uh like according to the developer is is actually an issue um so if you do have an issue with that you just have to use an external usb keyboard um so that that's my take on the demo of a lively haunt and uh all right until next time agg out
And that's a very respectable 4.5 for Mr. Geek. So, so far, things are looking very lively indeed for this Hans. Yes, very much. My own thoughts, as you can probably imagine from my effusive commentary, were similarly enthusiastic. Okay, so, uh, first impressions. Uh, the presentation, really, really good. Uh, we've seen pixel art uh, in games, uh, but this is done right. First of all, it runs in that native resolution. Now, I know, going into the options, window size, you can pick whatever it is, but the game is natively running in, it must be three, it, yeah, it must be 320 by 180. So that's cool. So this is proper pixel art. Uh, second of all, the pixel art is really good. It's got that uh, Hugo's House of Horror vibe to it, but it but it's prettier. Uh, I guess we're in a horror game because Switch has gotten mauled twice by spectral beings and the deaths were gory, fantastically gory, pixel gory. There's just something about pixel gore. It's just, it's just beautiful. Gore can be excessive. Uh, gore can be gratuitous. But when it's pixel gore, like that sort of pixel gore was just like pi pixel blood splattering and all that and and the woman with the face missing and all that it's it's brilliant because it leaves stuff to your imagination like you go okay that would be horrifying if i saw it in real life but your mind has to fill in the blanks the dual parser thing stroke of genius uh absolute stroke of genius i, I guess the only way to uh, expand upon that idea would be to have uh modem play uh, actually, I don't know if you can have... They have to have their own keyboards. They must be connected when the game is launched. Any keyboard added? Okay, so no. Because I was saying, uh, or I was thinking, was that not even modem play. I don't know why I said modem play, but, you know, like, proper multiplayer. One person at one computer, another person at another computer. Like, you have a null modem or a... a can you tell the last time I played a multiplayer game was back in the 90s? So, anyway, uh, all, all that shit. But it could it w would be nice if you have... Or maybe, like, uh, you're playing on a single computer and it's split screen... Which would also be kind of weird, because then you have to adjust all the fucking graphics and shit, but you, you, you get what I'm saying. You could do some scrolling, maybe. You get what I'm saying. The thing I want to get around is that if you leave a screen, the other character has to go with them. But I understand that limitation, and it's pretty cool. So it, it necessitates that you have to sit and actually talk to the person you're playing with. Like, can we leave the screen now? Yes. Yes, dear. Uh, but I can also uh, envision that it might lead to some... Oh, shit! I didn't mean to exit the screen. Oh, God, I'm sorry. You were doing something. You have to come back to the screen. Everyone's uh, location has been changed and all that. And the writing was was uh, was, was was really good. It wasn't, it wasn't as funny as Sons of Saturn, or, or at least not, not as flowery. Not a lot of sense of humor in it, but maybe that's to come. It was more in the style of AGI games from the Sierra Age, as in serviceable. As in, you, you, this is what you're looking at, and this is what's happening. Fill in the blanks yourself. Which is, it's actually pretty cool that you get to customize them. I mean, uh, in, in Space Quest 1 and 2, you got to name your character, uh, which is kind of customization. But the original idea, the original intent for Space Quest 1, at least, was that you could also pick the gender. And this game goes a step further, and not only do you pick the gender, uh, although it is... There are only two genders. You could have. Yeah, you should probably look into that. Uh, but uh, you can, at least you can pick gender and you can uh, customize the appearance. Uh, and it does not seem to have any bearing on the game whatsoever other than... a lot. This is what I was trying to get to. Other than allowing you to roleplay. Uh, as, in, as in fill in the blanks of this like empty slab of a character yourself which is what the old AGI games did. He's you. What do you want to do? That kind of thing. Uh, score, again. Uh, I don't know why I'm giving out scores. I didn't instruct the others to give rankings. We're not supposed to give rankings. It's just something I did at the first one, and now I'm stuck with it. Um, I gave uh, Sense of Saturn a 4.5 because that was the best one I played uh, yet. I mean, I'm going to say 5 for when I'm so into something that I desperately need to play more. So none of these games so far have me desperately wanting to go for more, but this is a definite 4.5 as well. Intriguing, love the idea, love the presentation, writing. There's a clear, oh, once again, clear mystery right from the start, although it's a kind of uh, tried and true, what, what is the phrase I'm looking for? Uh, Well-trodden uh, setup. Car breaks down, middle of the road, where are we? Blah, blah, something shitty's gonna happen. Uh, we've seen it before, but you can do a lot of things with that, and, and, and again, the, the, the sort of throwback style here invites a certain kind of 
you know, a stereotype, I guess, or a certain, a, yeah, it kind of invites that sort of, yeah, we've seen it before, let's see where this one is going. I'm into this, this is great. Yeah, I wanna play more of this. Yes, that is indeed a 4.5 from me as well. And Anna writes, I'm a huge fan of parser games and I liked the scary elements, even though I didn't get very far in my first 15 minutes. I uh, missed out a really in there, um, even though I didn't really get very far in my first 15 minutes. Okay. I certainly died at least 10 times, and that's very true, and what glorious deaths they were. I did uh, cut out a few of them, but uh, anyway, she drops a brick solid 4.5 on this game. So that's 17.5 total wolfy points for a lively haunt, which makes it the winner of this bunch by a narrow but definitely not insignificant margin. Not that there's anything to win, per se, other than the approval of four randos on YouTube, but there you have it. Now, obviously, our little party game here shouldn't discourage you from going out and checking out all four of these games yourself. All of them had some promising elements to them, and even Bent Oak Island bringing up the rear with 11 points is still a decent point above the halfway mark, so I think we can comfortably conclude that none of these games qualified as a waste of our time. Whatever that means to you. But anyway, thanks. Big thanks indeed to my Wolfie compatriots. Please go check out their channels and or podcasts with the links in the description. Some of them have even posted their full length uh, playthroughs, so you can go and check those out as well. I know One Short Eye has, I think Adventure Game Geek is going to, and I don't know what Anna is going to do, but uh, it's, uh, it's <laughs> an audio only playthrough on her podcast. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Anyway, a massive thanks you. Th thanks you. And also a massive thanks to the developers of these four games. Links to their game's Steam pages are also in the description. And lest you think this was an unnecessarily cruel exercise, don't worry, we did reach out to each of these four developers and ask them if they were okay with this little parlor game of ours, and they all accepted. So, yeah. And let's not forget, they came to us first, so really, I think we're morally in the clear here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little jaunt. We had a lot of fun with it, and we will continue to do more of these if any more developers have the cojones or appropriate streaks of masochism to send us their demos. So, if you are an up-and-coming, scrappy young developer who want their game featured in a future Wolves episode, well, you clearly know how to reach us, so have at it. I'll be putting up my playthroughs of these four games on my second channel, SQH Plays, in their full unedited uh, glory, I guess. The first one, Bent Oak Island, is already up at the time of this video's release, and the others should go up very shortly. And I will also leave links to my flea-ridden compatriots playthroughs. That's, that's a joke based, you know, they're wolves. They're kind of like dogs. They have fleas. Fuck it. Um, if, I, I will link their playthroughs if they have decided to make their playthroughs public again. I'm, I'm not really sure at the time of this recording, but yeah, okay. What, but anyway, if, if they haven't, then go and bug them about it. I'm, I'm not the boss of them. Anyway, that's it for now. Take care. Happy devving. Happy gaming. And until next time, I'll see you around the Chrono stream. Ciao. Why did I say ciao? Bye. <laughs> Bye. Ah, uh, I gotta get more, more juice in. <coughs> there it was. Ah, uh, uh, and a little. Ah. Uh, <laughs> God, I was wondering where that went. <laughs>